Hi, and welcome to this video of Dynamics 365 talk, where I'll be discussing the 2020 Release Wave 2 features, which came out for early access on August 3rd, 2020. Now, since there's a lot of features, I'll probably record some additional videos to cover as much as possible. And in this particular video, I'm going to cover the generic updates and enhancements, and also the updates for Dynamics 365 sales. But before we get into it, let me introduce myself. My name is Dion Taylor. I'm a Microsoft Business Applications MVP. Feel free to check out my blog at d365goddess.com. Follow me on Twitter at d365goddess or connect with me on LinkedIn by scanning the QR code on your screen. All right, so let's talk about exactly what I'll be sharing with you guys today. So here's the agenda. I'm going to cover some generic updates. As you can see here, app switcher, timeline, email updates, forms, and we're going to talk a little bit about dashboards as well. And then the Dynamics 365 sales updates, which is the convert to PDF updated feature. And we're going to talk about the forecasting updates as well. But before we start talking about those, I wanted to make sure to let you guys know that Microsoft actually put on their docs website that the unified interface for model driven apps will be the standard in the 2020 release wave two. So the legacy web client will not be available after the 2020 release wave two. And as part of this process, Microsoft wants to make the move to the unified interface as painless as possible. They've introduced a new transition service to switch environments to the unified interface prior to December 1st, 2020. And environments that aren't transitioned by December 1st, 2020 will automatically be switched to the unified interface. So keep that in mind. Now, the first thing I wanted to talk about was the app switcher. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull up my environment here. And you guys probably remember that we had an arrow next here to Dynamics 365 that we can click on and then we would be able to select the app that we wanted to switch to from there. So that's gone. At first I was kind of like, okay, how do I switch to a different app? So all you have to do is just click here on the name of the app. And as you can see, that will bring up this larger app switcher. So from here, I can also start editing my apps, right? And I can just access my apps as well. So all you have to do is basically just select any of those apps and then you can just go ahead and click on that and that will log you in to that particular app. And then we have some timeline enhancements. So let's take a look at that. So what you can see here is you now have this expand all records button over here. So when I click that, it will basically expand everything here on my timeline. And the other thing that I also noticed here is we now actually have the ability to always show the email as conversations or show them as individual messages. And you can just change that as you can see directly here on the timeline pane. Then related to the timeline, I guess, are some of the updates to the email entity. So I'm just going to go ahead and open a compose window to create a new email. And you'll see that the form looks a little bit different, right? We used to have these different tabs here, but all of that is now in the same page. So I don't have to go ahead and look at email engagement in a different tab, right? All of that is on that same page, as you can see. I can also, this is what I could do before as well. I can go ahead and make this full screen. But what I couldn't do before, I'm just gonna give it a second here, is I can actually expand the body right here, this area of that email. I can expand that to full screen and then I can just start using Right, these different fonts, I can update right whether or not I want to go ahead and enter some tables, etc. But that's kind of, uh, I figured, a pretty big change. 
And then when I was looking at this, I was like, okay, well, where are the attachments, right? Because they're supposed to be right over here. Well, obviously, duh, I'm not too bright, I guess. You need to save the record first, and then you will see that the attachment section actually will be visible from there as well. Now, according to the Microsoft Docs page, it says that the enhanced email experience will also be expanded to viewing an email, updating and replying to an email from the timeline. So I didn't really see that. So I'm just going to go close out of this right here. I have an email and then if I go ahead and open that record, it's still basically loading that same open the full email, that same page that we saw before. So I'm not sure if that's just because it's not enabled yet in this environment or if that's coming later, but I just wanted you guys to be aware that that's definitely coming. And then as I was looking at the forums and moving back and forth, I saw there were a couple of updates there as well. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and pull up my environments. Let me just go ahead and close out of this one. Let me go back here to accounts and open the account record. So I'm not sure if you guys saw this, but one of the things that's new is this go back button. I used to just use my back button on the browser, but now you can just use this button over here. And the other thing that you see over here is this little, I don't even know what to call this icon, but it basically allows us to pull up the view, right? for this particular entity because I opened a record from a list. So again, you're going to be able to, to do that. We already had that working. Uh, it was already available, but you could just see that it's a different button now on this command bar up top here. Now with dashboards, I don't really have anything to show you guys because again, it wasn't there in my environment, but I wanted to show you the Microsoft Docs site here, which is basically the, you can see here the power apps area of the release. And what you can see here is that there's going to be added support for customizers to use a system dashboard for a power BI report there's now a new type of dashboards and if you click on this link it just takes you to make that power or what what is it called it make that power apps.com but i was trying to look at if there's a different dashboard in here but there really wasn't but again i just wanted you guys to uh to be aware that that's out there as well and then i'm going to talk about uh, dynamics 365 sales and the first one is to be able to convert to PDF. So these are those Word templates, right, that we have in the system. And that experience is a little bit different. So first I'm going to show you where you can kind of set this up, right? It's the same place where it was before. If you go here to app settings and then you go to productivity tools, you will see here on their productivity tools that convert to PDF. And what we can do now is you can see here, this is a whole list of entities that you can now enable for those word templates. And then you can just go ahead and start searching for that. So you can see here, I have opportunity enabled already, but that's all you have to do. You just check that box and then you hit save. But what I ended up doing here in this environment, if I just want to show, oops, I don't want to enable that guy. If I just want to enable, or you want to show which entities have been enabled for word templates, you can see that directly from within here. So now let's take a look at that new experience. I'm going to go back here to sales. I'm going to go to my opportunities and I'm going to go to six orders of products, blah, blah, blah. And let's go to the product line items. Now, the first thing that I noticed is this used to be a button that said create PDF. So they kind of renamed that and it's now called export to PDF. Now, let me just go ahead and click that so you can see the different experience that we have here. So we now have this new window that pops up. Just going to give it a second here to load. And here we go. 
So I really like this new experience. You can kind of see that I can search templates if I have a lot. In this particular case, I only have three different ones. So you can kind of see what that looks like by just selecting those templates. Then I can download it. I can email the PDF or I can save it to Dynamics. And I'm not sure what the difference is. I guess this is going to SharePoint. That's my, what my guess would be, but I can try that out. So, and then what you can do from here is, again, you can even print this, you can rotate this clockwise or like however you wanna go ahead and do that. And then again, you can print that button as well. You can like zoom in if you want to. So you have the full capabilities of that PDF viewer here directly in your screen. So I really like this new look and this additional functionality. It's, it's just really, really clean. And, and again, it's less sloppy because you don't have to right click on the button and load the PDF and see what it looks like. You can kind of get that preview directly by selecting different templates. Now, another enhancement is that we now also have the ability to create, to generate these PDF files programmatically by using the API. So take a look at the release notes um, where you can see the details in regards to that as well. And lastly, we also have some forecasting enhancements. And this is, I believe, a pretty big one because I had a client that was actually asking for that. So let me just go ahead and pull that up as well. So I'm just going to navigate here to my app settings and we're gonna go down where it says forecast configurations. Now, I've already been working with this a little bit, but when I first navigated to this area, I actually had a notification, that one of those jelly notifications on the top of the screen that says warning forecast definitions have been removed and replaced by forecast configurations. So I guess they're just leaning on a different entity now to store those forecast configurations that you see over here. So I don't know what's going to happen with the forecast that were already in the system because I couldn't really find them here on their inactive. So I don't know if you have to set them up from scratch or, or whatnot, but that's definitely something to, to take a look at. So what I noticed here is these, this new template, so to speak, that's called product forecast. And that's exactly what it is, what it sounds like. We're now going to be able to create forecasts for product families and then their related products. Um, so instead of, of looking at a forecast for, for sales reps and looking at their individual performance, we can now look, for example, at expected sales from that product perspective. Now, when I was setting this up, and this is actually one that I already set up, so I just want to go ahead and show you this real quick. Let me just go back here to general. You do have to set the top of the hierarchy, right? What is the top of that hierarchy? So you can see that right over here. That is, in this particular case, a product family. So I wanted to see if I could actually set this up without selecting a product family, but it doesn't allow you to do that. So if you want to create these forecasts for certain products that you have, then again, you're, you're gonna have to make sure that your products are set up in a system related to a product family. Now, the, the other thing that was new is if you go here to snapshots, you can now have the system take daily snapshots. And we couldn't do that before. We actually had to navigate to that forecast configuration record, and then we had to go in there and manually create a snapshot. So that's gonna be automatically now. Now, I haven't really tried to see if I could delete any of those snapshots, so I don't know. So we'll have to take a look at that a little bit later as well. But let me just go ahead now and show you what that looks like. Go all the way here to forecasts. And I just set this up not too long ago. So there's not a lot of data in here. Here's my product forecast. So a couple of different things, right? This is that products family, as you can see. And then what it does is right on a per product level, it's showing me the different amounts. And then obviously those 
forecast stages as well. And again, those forecast stages in this particular configuration are related to the opportunity that these products are related to. So I can go ahead and again, click on that. You can do some grouping on here as well. This is also new that wasn't there either. And then you can see these are the different opportunity products, as you can see. Let's see if I can do this on an, I can group this by opportunity. And then I can just go ahead and click that plus button and see the underlying records, right? This one only has one, but this is how you could kind of see that as well. Now, if you look at the doc site, let me just go ahead and pull that up real quick. It actually has some additional features as well that you can see over here. So support for multi-currency, support for quantity forecasts, hiding the managers from their own forecast. Calculated columns can now be adjustable, advanced admin capabilities for enabling, disabling underlying grid columns. But you can see that some of these that are marked with the star will be released sometime between August 3rd and October of 2020, and they need to be enabled by a forecast administrator. So I'm guessing that the hiding the managers from their own forecast is just if they have a zero quota. Um, but again, I, I don't know because we you saw earlier when I showed you that configuration that that piece was not available as of yet. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button and be sure to check back again next week for another video. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.